In this tutorial, we're starting where we left off in the last tutorial. So in the last tutorial, we created a new Flash Develop project, added the Electro Server SWIC to that project to gain access to the API. Uh, we created a settings XML file, which defines the possible uh, connections to Electro Server that could be made. And then we wrote some code to connect to Electro Server uh, li and listen for the connection response and the login response. So now that we're successfully connected to Electro Server and logged in, uh, we're going to take this just a little bit further. We're still going to make this a completely code-driven example. There's no UI or, or visual assets at all. Uh, so in this tutorial, we will create a room, and then once in that room, we'll send and uh, send a public message to the room, and we'll listen for that public message uh, to be broadcast back to the clients in the room. And then we'll uh, we'll trace out whenever we detect that other users have joined the room. All right, so let's do that here. Um, there's the on login response event handler. Um, and we, we want to join a room if uh, we successfully logged in. So if e.successful then let's say join room. That function doesn't exist, so let's create it. Control Shift 1 generate function. And we'll create a new create room request. Wrong one there. <laughs> new create room request. And then we'll populate this with some information. The create room request does more than just create a room. If the room already exists, it'll join you to that room. So it's a pretty flexible request. There's a lot of properties on there that can be set. Um, by default, uh, they uh, just allow you to uh, create a room. Uh, if the room already exists, you're joined to it. And it, it subscribes you to listen for certain types of events in that room. Uh, so we're not really going to get into all the details of, of, of what you can change here. Uh, we're just going to leave everything to the default and we'll just set the room name and zone name below and join. So let's tell it the room name. Room name, test room, and zone name equals test zone. And then we'll just send that to the server. es.engine.send CRR. Uh, I didn't mention what a zone is. Uh, zone. Uh, every room has to exist in a zone, and a zone can contain many rooms. You don't ever create a zone. It's just, it's the zone is automatically created um, if it doesn't exist, uh, and that's all it's used for, is just to store rooms. So a room name needs to be unique within its own zone, but, but you could have multiple rooms called test room as long as they're in different zones. All right, so we're sending the create room request. So let's, uh, in, in order to know if we join that room, let's listen for the join room event. Ignore that phone. <laughs> All right, uh, es.engine. dot add event listener message type dot join room event dot name on join room event so when a uh, w when you tr try to join a room using the create room request eventually you'll receive a join room event if you are actually joined to that room so control shift one generate event handler and it takes an event object of join room event. Okay, so um, what is on this join room event object? There's, a, well let me just click F4 here to jump us into that class so you can see. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we're not going to get into here at all. Um, there are a lot of properties. The, the ones that we care about though for this tutorial are room ID and zone ID.
So uh, in, in order to send a message to the room here in a little while, um, we need to store a reference to the room that we just joined so that we can tell the API which room to send it to. Um, so let's jump up here and add a property private var underscore room and type it as room. And we'll set it down here. Underscore room equals, and I'll, I'll explain this in just a moment, uh, es dot manager helper dot zone manager dot zone by ID, e dot zone ID, and then room by ID, e dot room ID. So what did we just do? Um, well, first you should note that uh, the Electra server class has something on it called manager helper. Manager helper is is something that manages um, anything that's stateful about the API. So as you join rooms and leave rooms, and as you know about other users, because um, they may join and leave a room, and as variables for rooms are created and destroyed and, and so on, things like that, uh, the API will automatically keep track of that stuff for you. Anything that the, that the API keeps track of um, is stored within the manager helper. So the manager helper has a user manager on it and a zone manager. So you would gain, a, if, if we're trying to find the room that we just joined, uh, we can say electroserver.manager helper dot zone manager and we look up the zone by ID um, and we pass in as a parameter the ID of the zone, get it off of the, the event object. And then on that zone we look up the room by ID using the room ID property that comes off of the event object. So now we have the room that we just joined stored uh, locally here. All right, so now that we're in this room, let's let's send a message to the room. So uh, send chat message and create the function var public message request equals new public message request and then on this public message request we have to set the message that we want to send so we'll do the uh, always exciting hello world and we have to tell it which room to send it to so pmr dot room id equals underscore room dot id and pmr dot zone id equals underscore room dot zone id so now we've configured the message object to contain the message to send and the location. So let's send it. es.engine.send. Okay, so now um, once we've joined the room, we send a, a chat message. And in order to know that we've received the chat message, we have to listen for a public message event. So es.engine.add event listener message type public message event on public message event and we'll create that event handler and it takes an event object of public message event and in here we'll just trace uh, e dot uh, we'll get this off of the event object e dot uh, user name plus colon space and then e dot message so let's just test this really quickly and what we should see is that you connect to the server you logged in you join a room and then you send and receive a chat message I'm compiling and I don't know if you guys can hear uh, the th thunder in the background but there's a storm going on <laughs> all right so you can see here, create room request, join room event. Um, okay, and uh, then I, I sent the public message request, uh, received the public message event, and then we traced it out right here. Job says, hello world. All right, so now we're in a room and we're chatting. Let's add one last thing, uh, and that's uh, to get, 
uh, get an event whenever the user list changes. So add a new event listener, es.engine.add event listener, message type dot um, user update event dot name on user update event. This takes a user update event object. <coughs> so this uh, this <coughs> this event uh, contains a property called action, and that action can have a few different values because the user could be updated. The user update event could could uh, mean a few different things. So let's look at that here. Let's just add a switch statement. Switch e dot action. And um, we need to import really quickly here um, the action, uh, user action, user update action. All right, so that's been imported. Um, so we'll do a switch on e dot action, and if user update action dot add user uh, user update action dot delete user. And let's just let's just look at that list here for a moment. You can see that there's add user, delete user, operator granted, operator revoked, send, sending video stream, stopping video stream. We're we're going to ignore all of these except for the first two for this tutorial. So um, let's look at that. So if the user was added, we'll just trace user added and then e dot username. Um, we'll throw a break in here, break. And if user was removed, user removed e dot username. All right, so. Um, at this point, if users will, were to join or leave the room that I'm currently in, uh, you would see these things traced out. Except I left the case statement off accidentally here. <laughs> Oops. Case. So, uh, I, I would like to test this, but... Um, we are logging in with a static username here. Um, where is that? Uh, so everybody would try to log in with the same username. So let's just randomize this a bit. Guest plus math dot random to string. All right. Now I'm going to compile this, and so it'll join the user to that room. And you can see that I was logged in and sent a chat message down here. I'm going to go to the the actual Swift file and launch it a second time, um, so we can see the user. Um, wrong directory, so we can see that the user was added. Connect and log in. So this Swift was just launched. Now let's go back and look at the console panel or the uh, output window. Okay, it says here, user added. You know, it's got a random number on here. And then that user sent a, a message to the world, or to the, to the room. So, there you have it.